Hello, 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 hello to you all. How are you doing? And happy Friday to you. How are we feeling today? Uh, a few people about to join us. A couple of people have messaged me actually uh, to say that they are going to join a little bit late, so waiting for them to come in. Uh, hello to those of you that are joining. Busy day today, in fact, um, at least here in the UK. Uh, this weekend is a bank holiday weekend, so a day off on Monday, which of course is the last day of August. Can you believe how fast this year is going? Uh, so what I'd like to do is talk about the weather, please, if you don't mind, just for a second. We seem to be racing through autumn and straight into winter. I'm not quite sure what is going on. Um, we do have a joke um, for those of you that are watching not in the UK or not from the UK. We do. You, you will know that we are all obsessed about the weather here and I normally start this life by making some comment about the weather. And we do have a bit of a joke in the UK that the weather is always terrible whenever we have a bank holiday weekend. So yesterday it was just chucking it down. A bit brighter today. Anyway, enough about the weather. I hope that it's wonderful wherever you are. How are we doing this week? How is your family? How's your business? How's your team? And how has your summer been going? We're almost, I guess, uh, at the end, this uh, bank holiday weekend, end of August. This kind of feels like the end of summer. So have you managed to take some time off? How have you managed to juggle um, home life, work life? Maybe you have a family, maybe you have children. How have you managed to juggle all of that family, business, work, etc.? cetera? Um, and uh, yeah, have you managed to take, uh, take a bit of time off, get a bit of perspective, take some time for, for you I really hope that you have and so are your children if you have them going back to school um, that will be happening in the UK here in the next couple of weeks is your business ramping up as well I know it's been a, a time of great upheaval for uh, for many of you and, and and many of us if you like um, so yeah is your business starting to ramp up what differences do you see in September and what have you been working on this week uh, let me know I'm interested to know I started uh, training back with my personal trainer Gabriel this week after a whole month off so he was away and then I was away I was in Sicily and then I was in Berlin and you know what I really thought I was keeping in shape I've been diving I've climbed Mount Etna twice um, and lots and lots of running but I need to tell you something and that is that all that cardio is really not the same as strength work um, and I'm really rubbish at doing it in between, which is why I need Gabriel. So I think he wanted to um, work me quite hard this week and my glutes are absolutely killing me. So if I wince every now and then, then you, you know why. I'm really happy that I've got a standing desk because I'm not sure that I could sit down today. So, um, you know, they say that there's there's good pain and this is definitely good pain because I know I've worked hard, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit stiff today. So uh, shake it all out. Here we go. So this week we held our August community event a couple of days ago and we were talking about getting organised and keeping our heads clear. Uh, I shared my five layer focus formula um, with all the attendees and we had a really great discussion. It was interesting to hear what different people struggle with in terms of getting organised and keeping organised and keeping their heads clear. Um, and also it was interesting to explore some of the reasons that we give ourselves for not getting things done. So what I'm looking to do is run a focus challenge in September um, to include many of you that weren't able to join us on Wednesday. So please let me know if you'd like to join in with that challenge. Um, it will really help you see your life and your business much more clearly and make better decisions. And I promise you that it will work even for the most distracted people. And even if it's something that you think, oh yeah, I really want to do that and I'm going to do that, it's actually much easier to do it in a group where we've got some accountability um, and uh, let's uh, let's get some kind of group energy going with this. So I'm going to run a challenge uh, during September. Let me know if you are interested in joining. It's going to be a lot of fun. So today I'm going to continue on that, on that theme of focus. And I want to talk about blind spots and what you might be avoiding in your business. Of course, we all tend to ignore those things that we don't want to deal with. So uh, sometimes that might be a difficult conversation or a task that we actually really don't want to do, uh, that we think is going to take us outside our flow or we know it's going to take us outside of our flow. But a lot of other times 
we're actually missing opportunities and we're actually leaving real hard cash on the table, which is a real shame at any time, but particularly right now is very, very important. And so I want to ask you to think about what are you avoiding or ignoring in your business? And what are the consequences of not dealing with those things? And those of you that work with me will know that procrastination is something that we tackle together. It's a key part of my six step, six step set for success system, lots of S's. Once you know why you're putting off stuff, then it is so much easier to solve the problem. And it is a fundamental truth that most of us are attracted to what is new and exciting. It's really easy to get distracted, especially if you're one of those people that gets bored really quickly. So give me a bit of a wave or a thumbs up if that's you. I know there's lots of you out there. And so we allow ourselves to get distracted. We allow ourselves to focus on things like marketing. And that is perhaps the most shiny and the most distracting of all of the things that we might choose in our business. Now, I need to say right now, I've got nothing against marketing. It's absolutely an essential part of growing your business, but only when it's ready to be grown. And what I see is that people are attracted to the shiny, shiny of marketing far too early in their business. So are you being bombarded by lots of people online out there telling you that they can help you to sell more, um, that, they, that a couple of Facebook ads or different kinds of ads here or there will make all of the difference? Yeah, me too. I think we're all bombarded by those messages all the time. And do you find those messages quite attractive, quite alluring, quite appealing? Well, of course you do. We all do. And so do you know what we do? We spend our time and our energy and our money on more courses, on more social media, maybe tweaking our website, building another funnel, launching a podcast, writing a book. Ask me how I know. Well, I am here to challenge you and to challenge some of the things that we tell ourselves about our business. I want your business to grow, absolutely. I want you to be even more successful than you already are. And I want your business to flourish and I want you to thrive. And so I want to ask you to reflect on, is your business ready to scale? Ask yourself that question. Are you and your business ready to scale? Can you answer this very simple question? Who are you serving and how are you serving them? Or put it another way, what are you selling and who are you selling it to? Now, if you can't answer that question, then you're not ready to scale. I'm sorry. <laughs> and if you're not ready to scale, then marketing can't help you yet. This is all about timing. Yes, of course, we need to test the market. Of course, we need to ask our community. We need to reach out to those people in our network and we need to ask them what they want, how they want it packaged, what they're prepared to, to, um, uh, to pay for. Uh, we need to test things. Of course we do. But here's the thing. Market testing is not the same as scaling and people get this wrong all the time. We cannot actually scale until we've built something that we know works. That means that we've built something that we've tested and it's robust and we know that it works and then we're ready to scale. So several of the clients that I've been working with have been really struggling to focus on this core essential part of the business and I absolutely know that they're not alone. But when we're struggling, what happens is that we tend to look for distractions because we want to avoid the pain of answering those key questions. So what's really going on in your head if you're attracted to all this shiny, shiny? Do you doubt your ability to solve the problem? Do you believe maybe that you don't know enough, that you need to learn more and more and more things? Do you maybe doubt that people will actually want to buy from you or want to deal with you? Are you resisting nailing down your product or service? And if so, why is that happening? What, what are you avoiding in your business? Now, maybe you've already got your products or services really well defined and you believe that you are ready to scale. 
using marketing and maybe you are maybe you are but let me ask you this first before we rush off um, to uh, building all these things and and spending lots of money on social media and advertising so before we spend that money chasing those new customers and uh, chasing after all that shiny shiny are you leveraging all the people who are already spending money with you are you adding value to all the people in your network are you leaving money on the table? And are you therefore failing to add value to people that you can to solve problems of the people around you that already you have their attention? It's so difficult to get people's attention. There's so much noise out there. Do we want to add to that? Do we want to chase after more and more attention when we're not maybe leveraging that that we already have? So think about your existing customers. Are you asking them for referrals? Um, maybe out of the goodness of their heart, or maybe you're giving them some kind of incentive to refer you, to refer other people to you, or you to other people in terms of your products and services. Do you have a referral scheme in place? And are you leveraging those people that already think that you're great, are already really happy with your products and services that you're giving to them? What else do your existing customers need or want from you? Are you speaking to them? Are you asking them those questions? Or are you concentrating on getting new customers? Also, another area, ex-customers. So people, maybe if you are based in a particular location and if your service is location based let's say maybe there are people um, who have moved away who have moved out of the community or just drifted away maybe during covid and lockdown maybe people stopped spending money with you or maybe they they had a change in their own circumstances in their in their daily rhythm etc are you reaching out to them? Are you contacting them? Do they know about um, maybe different ways that you're providing your service now? Or maybe they're ready to re-engage with you. Are you still keeping a relationship going? Are you checking in with them? Find out if they're okay, how they're doing. Do all your existing customers know about all the products and services that you offer? We often, I hear stories about this all the time. Somebody tells you that they have bought some great new thing from somebody else and you go, but I do that. I could have solved that problem for you. And do you know what? It's not because they didn't want to give you more business. It's because they didn't know. Do you have a product that is ready to launch or almost ready to launch, but you haven't quite got it out there? So these are the things when I talk about allowing ourselves to be distracted and when I talk about blind spots in our business, that's really what I mean. What are all the things there that we could already be leveraging, but we're not because we're allowing ourselves to be distracted by all that shiny, shiny. And there is absolutely a time for that. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against marketing. But really what I'm saying to you today and what I'm pleading with you today is please stay in your lane. Don't allow yourself to be distracted by all those shiny solutions that you and your business just aren't in a position to be able to leverage right now. Please be where you are in your journey. It is not a race and there are no silver bullets. I'm sorry, but there aren't. Business is all about getting the fundamentals right. And that is why I emphasize every single week, keeping things simple and doing the basic fundamental things well in your business. And then we can scale it. Then we can grow it and make it even more successful. It's in the DNA of many business owners, myself included, to want to run before we can walk. And that's great. You know what? I don't, I don't want to change you. I love you just the way you are. But I do want to remind you that while you're off chasing rainbows, there is gold in your business. There is gold in your network. There are opportunities that you could be leveraging and there is money that you are potentially leaving on the table. And that makes me sad. In these, challenges, in these challenging times, please make sure that you're leveraging all the resources and people all around you so that you can better support your customers, so you can solve more problems for them and you can offer them more solutions. 
Many of you have heard me talking about Talent Dynamics, which is a tool that I've used for many years uh, to help people get into their flow and leverage the strengths of other people around them to build their businesses. And I'm absolutely thrilled that over the last few months, I've been involved in the development of a much more nuanced and robust version of this amazing tool, and it's called Contribution Compass. If you've already had your profile uh, session with me, then I'd love to offer you the amazing opportunity of a free upgrade over to Contribution Compass. Do get in touch with me and I will send you, uh, or I'll get my, my team to send you um, a, a, a token, a replacement profile, um, so that you can get that upgraded and enhanced um, insight into you and your energies and how you're wired. And if you haven't yet experienced the huge impact that understanding your energies can have on you and your business, then please do get in touch. During the session that we held on Wednesday when we went through the focus formula, uh, one of the participants said, yeah, that's great, Lisa, I've just got too many things on my list. And I said, well, then you need to delegate more. And he said, well, I'm just really, I, I really feel guilty about giving people crap jobs. <laughs> I really don't want to do that. Why should I give away the, the shit jobs? And I was able to say to him, and I want to say to you again, one person's shit job is another person's favourite task. Please remember and please believe me and please let me help you see that you should only be doing those things that you're good at and that you love and that put you in your flow in your business. There are ways to leverage the strengths of the people around you. Let me help you um, figure that out for you and for your business, whether you're on your own or you already have a team. This stuff works. I'm going to close today's live with two quotes about distraction and blind spots in your business. So the first one is from Tom Kite. He's an American professional golfer. And what he had to say is, you can always find a distraction if you're looking for one. And isn't that the truth? And the second one is for Iyanla Vazant. She is a lawyer and a speaker. And this is a, an amazing quote. Don't be minding other people's business. Stay in your car, in your lane, on your road, in your world. Just stay in your lane. Let me know your thoughts and your questions on this or any other topic relating to how to grow a business that really works for you. What area of business would you like me to talk about next? Uh, let me know. Um, I'm always interested in what challenges you are facing um, and bringing those into my life so that I can best serve you. Do let me know if you'd like to join our September Focus Challenge. It's going to be brilliant. Um, and I think it's coming at just the right time of year um, when all the craziness of September is kicking off. Let's help you get focused so that you can make the right decisions with a clear head and that you can grow your business. I hope that you have a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing and whoever you're doing it with. I really wish you a happy and peaceful time. And as always, if you want to talk, you know where I am. Take care, stay safe and do keep in touch and have a lovely bank holiday weekend. Bye for now.